Of course, it's been a long one for Deep Purple, Cover Killer Nation, uh, the band that we're going to be speaking about today, with their 19th studio album, Now What? Uh, this is a band that's been around since the latter part of the 1960s, pinnacle to the formation of uh, heavy metal, the origination of the genre, very, very important in the field of hard rock, psychedelic rock, and even progressive rock. Now, there has been many, many different versions of the Deep Purple lineup throughout the years. And, of course, we all remember that we just recently lost their founding keyboardist, John Lord. However, the lineup that is currently being in service has not the services of Richie Blackmore on guitars, but rather Steve Morris from the Dixie Dregs. And if you don't know the Dixie Dregs, I definitely recommend that you check those guys out. Definitely thought-provoking mainly, if not mostly, instrumental, progressive rock as it's been deemed, although it dabbles into many, many different styles of music. Now with this incantation of the band, with this formation of the band, it is actually quite interesting. And it's actually quite sad in some regard to see that the highest that this band is able to really chart in America is on the top independent charts, or the top heat seeker charts instead of it being a part of the Billboard Top 200. This is, of course, the band that gave us such great classics, such as the Lazy or Smoke on the Water, whose album Machine Head is considered to be one of the most important albums of all time. It definitely shows you how times have certainly changed, and how a band like Deep Purple, even though they still have an extreme significance and extreme importance in the realms of hard rock, and even in heavy metal, and definitely in, you know, progressive rock right now, how they just don't seem to fit into the popular culture and the norm. But then again, whenever you release an album with the title Bananas, well, many people probably thought the band went bananas, even though that album was actually pretty good. From the opening moments of uh, this album, Now What?, uh, the song A Simple Song, you can definitely tell that this experience that lasts over an hour just barely is going to be certainly a thought-provoking and an interesting ride. This is one that starts off very, very slowly, very simply. The Simple Song title actually fits the introduction to this track very exquisitely and very nicely. It is able to, you know, start off with this simplistic idea and then build as it progresses, and it is certainly a fitting opener for the track. And then we get into weirder songs, such as A Weirdestin, which is just, well, is admittingly weird. Uh, Out of Hand and Hell to Pay, Hell to Pay considered to be one of the first singles off of the record. Uh, however, as this album really starts to progress, you start to see the expanding nature and all of the different influences that this album is going to kind of take on. There's definitely that hard rock influence, there's the keyboard heavy uh, moments that have been a part of Deep Purple's music ever since the beginning, something that has certainly been a keynote side of Deep Purple Sound. We see very, very interesting guitar work from Steve Morse throughout the entirety of this record, and Ian's vocals still continue to be just as good as they have been for years. This is, of course, in stark contrast to what Jeff Tate has become from Queensryche, but I really don't want to touch bass with that again. Now we have some interesting, interesting tracks on here. Uncommon Man, which clocks in at seven minutes, is definitely one. However, the one that really juts out to me is what is the closing track on this album that, that's not including the bonus track, and that is entitled Vincent Price. Uh, Vincent Price, of course, is a track in tribute to the late actor and the man who, of course, is perhaps most famous, uh, if not for his acting, for doing and providing the voiceover on Thriller by Michael Jackson. Yes, that sinister laugh is indeed Vincent Price, and if you don't know that, and you know Michael Jackson, you know Thriller, and you know all of that, then seriously, that rock that you've been camping under, just blow it up and come and join the rest of the world. But this is a very good track. I think it is a pretty awesome tribute. Uh, Vincent Price Lives Again is kind of a cool little idea. I really like that. And being a fan of Vincent Price myself, it is certainly nice to see a... Uh, reference such as that in a song uh, by a band just as legendary perhaps as the man as, that they are talking about, uh, although in two uh, different respective fields. Overall, this album definitely has some great moments on it, and the one thing that I think I was most concerned about whenever I decided to undertake this review was that it was going to kind of just feel like, 
most albums from older bands, as some people would say, would feel. Well, they are trademarked to their craft, but definitely sounds change throughout the years. Some bands decide to tame things down, others decide to kind of soften things up, or still others decide to simplify their sound tremendously in order to kind of accommodate that which they themselves are feeling as they age. I don't feel that with Deep Purple. Instead, I see a band that is kind of diving deeper into the progressive side of their sound that is continuing to try to make evolutionary tweaks to their sound, which is already legendary and already needs uh, no introduction. And if anything, is a sound that needs further exploration from a lot of fans that either claim uh, to be big fans of Deep Purple, but in reality are only fans of the work from Machine Head. They're only fans of Smoke on the Water. They know the riff. They've practiced it on their guitar, perhaps whenever they were first learning, and that is the furthest that they dove into the band's body of work. Whenever you examine it, you find that it is actually quite the interesting journey, just like an interesting journey for a band such as Rush. This album, I feel, is going to fit very, very nicely into their most recent discography because it is uh, continuing to showcase that the band still has a tremendous ability. Uh, whenever it comes to writing good, solid music. I definitely feel that the song craft on this album, the songwriting, is still one of Deep Purple's principal strengths. They don't necessarily need Richie Blackmore in order to create interesting music that is able to employ luscious guitar lines, fantastic keyboards, and of course just some really great uh, drums, some bass, and vocals. This is not something where Richie's departure whenever he went to form Rainbow or his various departures during the reunions of, that this band took part in in the 1980s and once again in the early 1990s is necessarily going to hinder them. I still feel that some people actually feel that Richie Blackmore truly is and makes Deep Purple when in reality that is not really the case. Yes, he may be responsible for one of the most addictive riffs of all time. He may be responsible and be part of the album that really broke them through and gained them mainstream allure and praise. However, Richie Blackmore does not a Deep Purple make. And this fact, this album, once again, spotlights the fact that uh, Steve Morse has gotten a lot of talent, and he is definitely probably a very underrated person, uh, an underrated guitar player in the grand scheme of things. Not to say that the Dixie Dregs necessarily don't have a lot of backing behind them, nor do they have a... Uh, a significant underground fan base, especially in the progressive rock department. Uh, however, I definitely feel that his appreciation is sometimes lacking, and he has this tremendous ability to craft some very spectacular songs, and it is just kind of a shame that this is an album that I think for a lot of people, except for those perhaps hard rock gurus or those new fans that are just kind of interested to see what the band is doing now, or perhaps this being their first exposure, well, aside from them, this album's probably going to go largely untouched, largely unlooked, and largely non-considered. I think that this album definitely should be considered. I think it does have a lot of strengths to it, and I think that fans of progressive rock, fans of hard rock, just good old school fans of Deep Purple will really enjoy much of what this disc is able to uh, really provide. It may not necessarily be Machine Head, in fact, it's far from it whenever it comes to it, but... Even those older fans will definitely have a lot to look forward to on this album, considering the very last track, the bonus track, It'll Be Me, is in fact a Jerry Lee Lewis cover. And if that doesn't get you interested in this album, well, I don't know what will. I have to give this definitely three and a half stars out of five, probably a seven out of ten. And that's not necessarily me knocking the album whatsoever. I think it's a very strong effort from these guys. It's just something where I think that it doesn't have a lot of appeal to uh, a tremendous amount of people. I like the fact that they dabble into a lot more progressive rock stylings, and I think that the songcraft is definitely a principal strength on this album. It's something that really makes it worth listening to. They definitely do a lot of things right. I feel that sometimes, though, it can feel a little bit laggy at times, almost as though it's dragging its own weight around. And that is something that it's very hard to avoid, especially in progressive rock. Sometimes you kind of get a little too distracted in order to make it to the next point whenever you should just really get to the point. However, I think there's a lot of fine moments on this disc, and I think that's going to be something that will pay in leads if you give it a chance and allow it to expand its horizons upon you. So I highly recommend Now What from Deep Purple for all of you members of the Cover Killer Nation. Whether you be old or new, whether you be familiar with the band outside of Smoke on the Water and Machine Head or not, 
this is certainly one that demands that you give it a chance.